Hello there guys, it's Joey. So today we're going to have a little bit of a musing type video. We're going to just sit and chat really. I will update everybody first because I didn't make very many videos last week. I decided to have a week off. If, if you're on Facebook you already know but uh, I didn't really discuss that at length on YouTube so apologies if I just seem to be kind of distant and disappear on YouTube and there's been a lot going on recently in a not very positive fashion and I wanted some time away from it all from YouTube to reconnect with my roots to go see family I did upload that and actually it's been a couple of weeks and I've just sort of been going back to the roots of what makes my path mine reconnecting with spiritual thoughts and ideas and I actually shared a couple of these on Facebook and I've written down those statuses to put across the main body of what this video is going to be about so the usual videos will continue I will endeavour to sort out a Can't Witch Without this week as well as this week's Prisma Visions card and other bits and pieces. There are a few new products coming for the store. Uh, a couple of products have gone up without a video while I have been just avoiding YouTube a little bit for a couple of weeks. I was going to start yesterday but I had some other bits and pieces to catch up on so I thought we would jump into it today. So I'm not entirely sure how, what I'm going to entitle this video at the minute. It's somewhere between sort of reclaiming your spiritual path, uh, reclaiming sacredness perhaps. So I'm going to read through the two statuses which I posted over the week and then we we'll sort of go from there and, and talk about it. So the first one went along the lines of musing over the preconceived ideas of what it means to lead a spiritual and witchy life today. Watching people justify a life of ancient knowledge determined to find acceptance or explanation in dire need of acceptance. Otherwise, people are screaming at them, prove it, document it, show us and maybe we'll approve. I don't need your approval. I've long passed the idea of needing approval. I grew up in an environment where I was supposed to compete for approval and love and never ever received it. Now I'm happy to accept there is an unknown basis in scientific method to magic, but I'm not interested in justifying my methods or my existence or indeed my witchcraft to anyone else. It works. I will privately seek to understand myself and the world around me, deity, magic, energy, my spirit, on my terms without justifying it to anyone else. Trust me when I say I hold myself up to a stricter critique than most. Only I can accept myself and the wonder of something deeper than the rest of society may want to connect to. I will never dismiss the progress of science, but I do question the route humans take with it, literally destroying our world. There's a reason for the resurgence in the interest of green living, herbalism, holistic therapies, etc. The screaming to protect our planet instead of raping and murdering her, because those who can only see the rational and forget the heart, have lost touch with something deeply needed in our human evolution. Instead, they are damaging the world for progress's sake. I firmly believe magic is just science we haven't explained yet. I also believe that we need to wake up and remember how to marvel and wonder at things and let them into our own heart. So there's a number of ideas in this status of things which have been churning in my in my mind. The first one is this dual fashion for being accepted and 
scientifically explaining everything as part of a spiritual path, which are two themes which keep coming up in my wider circles, and they seem sad and odd to me. The first one is the idea of needing approval, needing acceptance. I think to a, a large degree we all succumb to this, you know, because we want to be liked, we want to have, be popular, we want to have friends, we want to be accepted for whom we are. And there comes moments in everybody's life when we realise that we have to move beyond it because in order for us to be our most authentic self, our truest self, we cannot be playing second fiddle to somebody else's idea of who we ought to be, particularly when we are striving to lead a spiritual existence or to walk the path of witchcraft. Again, I could talk about them being separate entities, but I think we will just leave it with a scope of understanding that the idea of witchcraft is that it's a, a craft, a, a path walking, and spirituality is more to do with the divine side of things, and for most people there is an interconnectedness between them. There is for me, and that's the point of view in which I'm expressing, so... That aside, witchcraft for me is supposed to be about going against the accepted norm in however we choose to look at that, to do that. It conjures up this idea of, of women on the fringe of society who were midwives and the herbal healers. It goes further back than that and is in intimately connected with the idea of the medicine man or medicine woman. People who were often almost but not completely separate from the other denominations of society, other denominations being, you know, builders, warriors, hunters, uh, craftsmen, etc. Because they performed functions which were honoured and deeply spiritual and a little bit other. So the idea of having a little bit of separateness isn't necessarily this overwhelming negative thing which modern society seems to portray people who are a little bit different as. And for me, I've gone through the lesson over and over again that it's far better to have one or two true friends than be surrounded by fakes. and. It's been a difficult experience for me over and over again and there are levels of trust involved that uh, get thrown through a loop over and over again. But at the end of the day we have to... Sorry, I say the end of the day and then I think of the Jeremy Kyle song. At the end of the day, at the end of the day. <laughs> right, um, at the end of the day we have to come to a point where we only look for our internal dialogue, our internal self-love, self-approval and we have to measure that with a balance of self-critique. There's nothing negative about self-critique done correctly. When we are constantly attacking ourselves that becomes something else, that becomes a form of self-abuse but a self-critique is a really sort of necessary thing it means that we look at our behaviours and we tell ourselves off when we're engaging in negative behaviour. It means that we don't have this sort of self-smugness that I was talking about in witchy complacency, which basically means that we decided that we can never err and we're not wrong and we're not going to change and we're not going to grow. And it's basically putting in self-blockages which prevent personal growth. But if we are constantly engaged in the need to prove ourselves as witches then we're kind of missing the point because if we're constantly self, you know, serving self by getting someone else's approval 
then we're looking outwards rather than living the path that we're supposed to be engaging on. It also opens up a well of kind of sort of emptiness as well because what approval are we getting and, and what does it really matter? Um, other people have touched on this in recent times about the sort of mainstreaming of, of witchcraft and how uh, a lot of the books teach the same thing and then there's been kind of this backlash against the idea of, of being fluffy. I don't like any of that nonsense because to be to be honest it, it just becomes sort of angry aggressive thing between two groups which should really be striving to educate and re-examine rather than sort of hitting out at each other. I will never have a problem with the beginner books, that, like, you know, the Wicca beginner books and things like that. They open the door for me. Now, I've never stopped since that point and that, I think, it, it, that ties into the complacency thing again because if, if you just read the beginner books and never seek to go beyond that, never seek to learn more than that, never seek to read more subjects than that, then you are kicking yourself in the foot, basically, because growth will not follow from inaction, from not living the witchy path, if that's the road you're on. The second thing that has been coming up over and over again is a sudden influx of disdain against spiritual people and spiritual path walkings uh, using science as a uh, sort of buzzword to discredit, inverted commas, people of a spiritual faith or spiritual basis. It's very hard not to get the hump with this <laughs> and it has it has irritated me slightly on occasion to the point where I'm like right okay so if we call something science because we've decided we understand it with a completely rational mind uh, that's better than trying to understand something with our heart soul and mind all, all in conjunction it becomes this idea that this cold rational way of thinking is always superior to f feeling and believing. I'm not against science in any fashion. I enjoyed science and I think it can do incredible things for humanity. I'm of the full belief that magic is science we haven't explained yet. That there is science behind it and that you know it all ties into sort of the understanding of energy. We accept in scientific disciplines that there are forms of energy which we accept exist, but we cannot see them. We can only see the effect. And to me, that sounds very much like spell work. But, you know, if I go into that over and over and over and over again, this video is going to be an hour longer than it would be otherwise. The thing that really irritates me is just there's been a basic lack of respect going on about this current theme and it, it it's reared its head in other fashions as well but it's basically this whole sort of screaming oh well our way is better uh, prove it, document it and maybe we'll approve of it. Mm. And I really honestly feel like that there isn't a sort of sense of self accountability in that because that's just sort of the idea that oh well unless you can prove it to me with proven scientific methods um, I'm going to ridicule you it's like okay how many um, how much scientific method goes into your day to day life that you prove to everyone else but just because someone is on a, a different way of thinking a spiritual path or a, a witchcraft form of life or any spiritual path uh, 
but they have you don't have to prove your life with scientific method and, and your values with scientific method but we do because we believe in there being some merit and value in ancient teachings that we don't treat our ancestors with a complete sort of haughty disdain saying they knew nothing and we know better than them <laughs> I don't I really don't understand the whole scientific thing that's going on right now and it I, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me it's like oh well people lived in the past so they must be wrong okay then <laughs> But there really is this sort of division of heart that I've been seeing going on and I really don't like it because the fact of the matter is that a spiritual way of walking a life, and it should be a day-to-day -day practice, is about heart. It's about who we are, seeking to understand who we are, our place in the world, the deity, the spirits, the world around us, the energy and spirits of the world around us. It all comes from the heart, from the soul, and I really don't like the idea that there should be a disconnect between those things. Justifying the sacred. I, 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 don't, I don't see why it needs the justification. So the second status kind of follows on a bit. Spirituality done right doesn't stand in the way of progress. It makes you examine what you dismiss for progress's sake. Spirituality done right doesn't ask you to be blind. It asks you to consider what your heart and soul say as well as your mind. Spirituality should not be an excuse to behave immorally. It should mean a higher ethical code and self-discipline. If you are using spirituality to demean, degrade, set back progress, or place yourself above others when you're t then you are abusing the privilege. Witches aren't insane. We just, inverted commas, accept that some people want to label us as evil, insane, or dangerous because we question the accepted wisdom. In those that take their path very seriously, it's obvious that they are the most discerning, they want answers, they're questioning everything, as well as themselves, accepting that they are flawed and limited and seeking to move past it, seeking to improve constantly. So, I don't understand for the largest part, this fascination with the idea of spiritual paths being blinding. I don't believe in blind faith. Um, I accept that that happens and there are uh, numerous examples of people behaving in ways which are drenched in hate and stereotype and using religion as a justification. Now for me that's not about spirituality, that's about justifying immoral human behaviour by whatever means necessary and religion and spirituality is a powerful weapon when it utilised the wrong way because it speaks to our hearts. And I wonder sometimes if the idea of discrediting spirituality and faith is in reaction to some people going extremist with it. The problem is, is you can have extremists in any walk of life. It doesn't have to be a spiritual slant. The political state of things right now is testament to that. I guess what really prompted the video, prompted me musing out loud about this, is the idea that we are 
trying to somehow walk away from and disconnect from the beauty of what it means to be a witch. We need to remember how to marvel and wonder at things, let things into our heart, just to, to not be uncaring and unfeeling. Whenever I feel dismayed or unsettled or if I'm having a, a little bit of a disconnect, I always go back to the beginning of my path and try to reconnect to the sense of wonder and limitless possibility that I experienced when I first came across the witchy path. When I first realised that it was bringing me home. And I think that's something that we desperately need to remember that being able to be a witch in it now and being able to say that and reclaim that word for something positive now is an immense privilege that's denied to a lot of people. There are people in the world that get stoned to death still. But there's also this, uh, this duty which I think gets thrown out the window too often. And it is a duty of people walking a spiritual path to show that we are not stupid, that we read and keep up to date with current events, that we're not against science and the progress of human evolution. We just speak with our hearts as well as our minds and we are against the destruction of the planet and other human beings for progress's sake, that we are the guardians of this world, because without this world we'll all die. That we need to stop thinking about the world around us and people and everything as being so disposable. I said recently that I wondered if we were all the ch children of the sort of all the broken children of the great divorce from humanity and nature. That we live so separate from nature now that it becomes this place to visit rather than the fact that it is supposed to be part of who we are as a human race. That deep connection is something that I feel has been a little bit lost that respect for the planet. Again, these are just, you know, I'm just musing out loud. These are just my thoughts over the sacred nature of the witchy path, I guess. So that's going to be it for this video. Many blessings.